Guys, it has finally happened. Android 12L is here. It is installed on my Surface Duo 2. It is not installed on my Surface Duo 1 as of yet. Apparently, it is rolling out the Duo 1. Mine has not seen it yet. It is 3.2 gigs here, and I think like 2.5 or so on Duo 1. It's actually good that it's not on my Duo 1 because it will give me a chance to basically do a side-by-side -side and show you guys the UI changes. So in this video, that is what we are going to do. We are going to very quickly go through the uh, biggest changes in Android 12L for Surface Duo and Surface Duo 2. If I miss some things, which I'm almost certain to do, it is because this has just happened. So uh, there's probably going to be some things that I'm just simply not going to see or be aware of just yet. If you spot some cool stuff, uh, yeah, drop a comment and uh, we'll talk about it. We'll learn some stuff together. Let's jump into it now. So on the lock screen, you should see that there is already a few things that have changed. For one, this is tinted slightly by the wallpaper. So the theming stuff is functioning. You probably can't see this on this camera, but trust me, it's there. If we swipe up, you'll see that the keypad is very different on the Duo 2 versus Duo 1. Let's go ahead and fingerprint our way into both of these. Let's try that again. <clears throat> the next thing you're going to see... On the left-hand panel where your widgets are, we have a pretty different look now. I think I've actually lost a widget somehow. Screen time looks totally different. Just overall, it has a cleaner, a cleaner, different look to it. Something that is supposed to more closely approximate uh, stuff in Windows 11. I think you can see that here. The, the actual blur effect seems to maybe be a little bit different as well. It's hard to tell without matching wallpapers. But it's definitely a different look, and it's also a different look on the screen to add widgets to this. It's actually a totally different UI. And we're going to see this a lot, right? So the stuff I'm going to miss simply because a lot of UI elements have changed and I'm not going to be able to see all of them. If we go into our app launcher, you can see a couple more things here. Look at the different look of the toggles here versus here. This is pretty bone stock Android. This is their own thing. They've done something different and unique there as well. If we pull down our notification shade, you will see, oops, wrong thing. You will see there, that is a very different look. That is much more akin to modern Android 12 and Android 13 rather than this look here. If we scroll down one more time, you'll see again that things have changed pretty radically. We have a nice blur effect going on as well that was not present. So this is just a much more refined, much nicer look to the UI. If we jump into our settings, again, things are radically, radically different. This really does look like Windows 11 now. You know, let's get a closer look at this so that you can see it a bit better. But this really, really does now look a lot like Windows 11. All the icons have been themed. Everything has been themed. Whereas, again, this was pretty much bone stock Android. Now we have themed things. If you go into connected devices and then surface pin, you'll see all the things that were there before. But now there is a thing for press and hold. And what it does is it apparently is going to bring up a pin menu, which you can then customize to put your own apps in this little bar. Let's try this on my off-brand Uogic pin. And it actually appears now that not only does that not work, but none of the buttons work. Up until this update, the normal button presses to like take a screenshot or open an app, all of that stuff worked on this pin. Now, none of these things are working. So it really does look like it is going to be Surface Slim Pin 2 or nothing. Maybe there's a generic pin that still works, but that one now no longer does. That is a bummer. At any rate, what you would basically have, you can kind of see here, whenever you would use this, you would have basically a little menu that will pop up that will give you little little selections that you can make to launch apps or do different tasks something that's kind of similar to what we have on windows and something that is similar to what samsung has on their devices as well so i mentioned already that we have the android 12 theming so let's go into wallpaper and style and what you're going to see here is choose a color palette and what it's going to do is it's going to grab your wallpaper and then give you accent colors based on the theming it's pulling from your wallpaper. Now you can also just go to accent colors and set your own. It looks like that's about all we have in terms of theming, but like you can see that it is in fact changing the color of these icons, again, based on what your wallpaper looks like. You're just gonna notice a ton of new flourishes to the actual experience. Like one thing you may have just now noticed, whenever you go home, the icon actually zooms into that Twitter icon. This is a pretty common thing on Android. Uh, I think iOS does this as well, and it's good that it's finally something that's here as well. We long press and hold to get to our multitask switcher. This is a very uh, uh, nice improvement as well. Again, with these nice blurred effects going on, if we do the same thing 
on Duo One, which is running the old software, there is no blur effect. Another cool thing that I'm noticing is that as I'm scrolling through these, I'm getting a nice vibration, a nice haptic effect that is not here. This has no haptics and this buzzes with each app that rolls by. So for now, I think I'm gonna kinda leave it there. I'm sure we're gonna discover a lot more stuff. Those are sort of the big obvious things. I just installed this myself. So I'm gonna need a little bit of time to play around with it. This is my daily driver again at this moment, my Duo 2, I should say. So I'm gonna be daily driving it. And if I come up with more stuff, we'll of course talk about it here. And I'll probably have a review of this update in a couple days time, hopefully as well. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.